Welcome to Project Management, Planning a Project. This was created for our MIST 2090 Business Information Systems course at UGA's Terry College of Business under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial License. In this video, we'll discuss examples of IT-enabled change, we'll show the steps to project management, and we'll look at some common project management planning tools. As we have discussed before, a project is a temporary undertaking to create a unique product, service, or result. Projects are particularly important in much of today's innovation-intensive knowledge economy. Information systems professionals bring IT-enabled change in organizations through projects. Some examples of IT-enabled change project in organizations can include the implementation of an ERP system to manage financial information throughout an organization. A new social media campaign associated with a product launch to spread awareness and solicit customer feedback. A business process redesign effort to comply with new government regulations on a business. According to last week's reading from the Project Management Institute, or PMI, there are six different steps associated with project management. These are initiating, planning, executing, controlling, closing, and success. Note that while this may look similar to the system development life cycle which we have seen, they are not the same thing. Projects are concerned with the overall context of the change with a specific start, end, and deliverables, whereas the System Development Life Cycle, or SDLC, is concerned with the work systems, technologies, and processes that are undergoing the change. One way to look at it is to view the SDLC as one step in project management. In the initiation step of project management, change leaders need to think about the business case of the project and be sure to conceptualize the goals for the project in a way that is consistent with this business case. Business models, such as the business model canvas that we worked on last week, help with this. The executing and controlling steps of a project is where we would see the SDLC. This is when the analysis of existing systems and processes takes place and when new ones are developed and implemented. In between we have the planning stages of the project. This is when we translate the goals of the project, the reasons for doing the project in the first place, into actionable steps. A variety of documents are developed in this planning phase and these documents are used to manage the project and to keep it on track. Three important documents that are part of virtually every project are the project charter, the work breakdown structure, and the project schedule. A project charter is the key document through which you translate the business case to project planning. The specific formats of different project charters vary, but they all essentially ask who, what, when, why, and how questions about the project at a high level. In addition to goals, a thorough project charter might also include an analysis of constraints, assumptions, and risks. Risk analyses have become particularly important in recent years given the uncertain business climate. After translating the goals of the project at a very high level in the project charter, it is time to get down to the details and start describing the specific activities that need to take place for the project to be successful. This is done through a project work breakdown. The project work breakdown results in guiding the work breakdown structure of a project. Essentially, this is a hierarchical arrangement of major tasks that need to occur in the project. 
Within each of these major tasks, there are typically a number of subtasks that describe the major task in more detail. These subtasks, in turn, can have their own lower level subtasks, and this can be broken down to multiple levels. In complex projects, subtasks can go down five or six levels or more. Work breakdown structures, or WBS, are typically represented as diagrams where the first couple of layers are boxes and the lowest level can be a numbered list. It is common practice to include time estimates and cost estimates in a work breakdown structure diagram. The most important part of a WBS diagram is the numbering. The highest level tasks will be digits 1, 2, 3, etc. and each of its subtasks will be numbered as decimal increments of that integer. For example, task 1 would have subtask 1.1, 1.2, and 1.3. This pattern continues down all layers of the WBS. So for example, subtask 1.1 might be further subdivided into subtask 1.1.1, 1.1.2, and so on. These numbers are used by project managers for a variety of purposes, including dividing responsibilities among project participants, monitoring activities and their milestones, and allocating project budgets. Once the work associated with the project is broken down by tasks and subtasks, project managers will arrange these tasks in order and schedule them out using a diagram known as a Gantt chart. A Gantt chart is a type of bar chart that is used to illustrate and manage a project schedule. Many of the leading project management software packages, such as Microsoft Project, use Gantt charts as the primary tool for groups to manage projects. When developing a Gantt chart, it is important to keep in mind dependencies. Does the start of one project require the completion of another. And milestones, important target dates for completing critical tasks in the project. To see more information of the diagrams and topics discussed here, please visit the following sources. This has been a Piercy production.